So today I want to talk about Dark Horse Comics. Like one thing that I've learned in life is that a lot of times everyone wants to reinvent the wheel and the reality of it is that we're standing on the shoulders of those before us. And so a lot of times I like to look at what other publishing companies have done, what other cartoonists have done and figure out like my version of that, like learn lessons obviously off of what they've done. And Dark Horse Comics is one of those that I've always held in high regards. I think you guys heard me mention them last time when we were talking about like how there's still these independently owned comic book publishing companies. Dark Horse Comics is one of them. And one thing I love about the Dark Horse uh, website is that it gives you such a good and detailed kind of account of the successes that they see. Some of them being, yes, the creator owned, kind of the way they've treated creators. That's why you have Mark Millar going back to Dark Horse, bringing his whole Miller world, like his own private world of comic books to Dark Horse Comics. You have Kevin Smith that's also jumped in there and with his new creator owned character, Masquerade, which is a really good run. You know, he even brought his Ask You universe into uh, Dark Horse Comics with the uh, Quick Stop 2. And there's other new creators, independent creators that, you know, call Dark Horse their home. Like I said, you know, that creator owned portion is definitely something that's been big for them. But then there's also this other thing of like, I recently just read a whole bunch of Dark Horse comics that the homie lent me. It was a bunch of Alien comics, Terminator comics, and Predator comics. And he had the original Alien vs. Predator run. I can see the charm of the Alien vs. Predator comic because it was definitely was a sci-fi uh, western. It was super well done. Definitely I can understand the fun and allure of it. But that's another big portion of the Dark Horse success was like, once again, Alien vs. Predators, Terminator, Aliens, Star Wars. I'm sure we've all had the Star Wars uh uh, Dark Horse Star Wars comics from back in those eras. Now, Dark Horse has Star Wars back. Dark Horse is doing Ghostbusters. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Dark Horse had a Planet of the Apes comic book run as well that kind of bridged the gap between the movies. So that's been another part of their business model and strategy that's worked for them. Now, once again, going back to that, you know, you got mail video. Some of the stuff that I was mentioning about that was kind of based on Dark Horse. Dark Horse Comics, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, started as a as an idea that a comic book shop owner, he had multiple comic book shops, he was like, you know what, I don't really like the quality of comics, I don't really like what is out there, let me try my hand at this. And then Dark Horse Comics came about that way, but he was a comic book retail shop owner who then started making his own comics. And his comic book retail shop businesses started with a two thousand dollar credit card. So I, I think he's, I think it was, uh, I think he launched the comic book store nineteen eighty, and he used a two thousand dollar credit card, and he built that up. And in nineteen eighty six, he launched Dark Horse Publishing. Uh, I forget what year it was, but then he also started. He launched his own like toy manufacturing shirts and things like that, like collectibles, and. Uh, and yeah, Dark Horse Comics is privately owned by one person. So Dark Horse Comics is an American comic book publishing company based in Milwaukee, Oregon. It was founded in 1986 by Mike Richardson and started as a small independent comic book publisher. You know, and like there's so many great titles when I think of Dark Horse Comics. Like definitely the alien runs from the 90s were just good, man. Like I said, reading the homies collection, like there's no doubt in my mind why they were so popular. The Terminator comics were hella good as well. Alien vs. Predator, Star Wars, a lot of great things, right? But then you had the indie shit that really hit, homie. Like, you're talking about, like, during the dark era of comics and you get Sin City by Frank Miller. Uh, you get uh, Hard Boiled with uh, Frank Miller and, and, and Jeff Darrells, right? You get uh, uh, Hellboy from Mike Manola. You get my, one of my favorites, honestly, uh, Flaming Carrot and, and, and uh, Mystery Man by Bob Burden. Like, all this shit really was different than the shit that was really out there, right? It's the same reason why I like Slave Graphics a lot, but Slave Graphics as a business just didn't have kind of what Dark Horse Comics as a business has. Has because they're still doing their damn thing. And that was one of the things that I found really interesting is that they have continuously grown. So like during the 90s, when a lot of comic book publishing companies were closing up shop and a lot of comic book retail shops were closing up shop, that wasn't the case for any of these kind of things. And it goes to tell you like wherever there is 
a changing landscape in business, there's also opportunity. And, and if you can see between the lines, you might be able to build something worth building. And I think that that's the case with Dark Horse. And I think that's why, that's why Dark Horse Comics is definitely one of those companies that I always look at. And, and there's a few and we'll go through them, but Dark Horse Comics definitely is on the top of the list of like the way I think publishing comics could be done and done right. And I think that the problems that something like Image Comics has or something like Fan Graphics has, Dark Horse Comics has as well, but they were able to find solutions to those problems and really build something not seen before, right? Like a lot of the licensings that they've done, it was like they took these stories and characters and kind of reinvented them themselves. There's a lot of cool shit when I was reading the homies collection, like Terminators can't climb rocks. And it's like, that's great. You have to give the humans an advantage to try to win. Uh, the predators are much more bloodthirsty in the comics than anywhere I've seen them in, right? And even like the alien comics always having a uh, newt in this in the issues and it's like that's why at the end of alien versus predators you see newt or that was the idea because like that was such a big part fundamentally of the comics and, and don't get me wrong like they've also built, bridged that gap that marvel kind of built where like some of the successes that dark horse talks about is their movies right they talk about hellboys they talk about alien versus predators which was obviously based off the comics right and so they talk about those successes as well but i just feel so adamant that dark horse didn't let the movie or the money made from the movies really overtake their job at making comics and and that's the difference between them and marvel so like i said man dark horse comics is definitely a very interesting uh publishing company to look at if you're into publishing and you're trying to build something i think that there's a lot of lessons to be learned from what uh they did and the way they did it kind of like this the slow buildup of it all and i just wanted to talk about it because i went down this rabbit hole because man oh man the homies collection was like phew, i want to say maybe 70 percent all dark horse and then the rest is just marvel but i definitely went down that rabbit hole and just binge them today i mean i probably read i don't know like i don't know a lot of comics but that's all i got for you guys today man as always thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe b cartel link in the show notes where you get a single issue of the furrow comics project if not a whole bunch of them all right you guys lates